to be SEO friendly, your store is more likely to show up on search results when people are looking for certain keywords. And this is why optimizing your store is important. So let's begin. As I've mentioned, optimizing your store can increase your ad rank in search engines. For instance, when people are looking for the keyword Shopify on Google, the first page that shows up on the search results page is Shopify. So the ad rank of Shopify is first. As the ad rank of your store increases, it increases the traffic to your store as well. When you improve your store's visibility and make it easy for potential customers to access your service, the traffic to your store is boosted. And this increases your profits as well. As you can see, these reasons are all tied closely to each other. Optimizing your store can actually lead to a better ad rank, better quality of traffic, which leads to better profits as well. So why wait for traffic when you can actually make it happen? There is no one-size-fits-all strategy to optimizing your online store because different types of stores require different methods. You need to have a few strategically planned methods to improving your web presence. I've listed out a few methods that will help you optimize your Shopify store and achieve higher ranking and more traffic, and they are Write unique contents Configure your website settings Search engine optimization and Give out promotional codes Let's have a look at each method one by one. First things first, you will need to write unique content for your store. However, before you can even start with writing content, you will need to research the keywords that you're going to use for your store. For instance, if you're selling watches on Shopify, look for a keyword that could represent your store. Fully utilize Google AdWords to look for a profitable keyword. Once you've found the keyword for your store, start writing content. And always remember, do not duplicate content from other sites. It's important that you write everything from scratch. Only original content will increase the ad rank. Every time you write for your store, try to use different keywords. When you expand the range of your keywords, the visibility of your store also expands because your store is more likely to appear on search results when you have a variety of keywords. The content on your store is not limited to the product description. It can also include blog posts, reviews, social proof, information about your upcoming promotions, social media updates, and so on. Generate content regularly and provide fresh content to satisfy the search engines as well as your regular customers. You definitely don't want people to always see the same page over and over again when they go to your store. Also, including your clients' testimonials is good social proof for your store. When someone else is commenting on your products and giving good reviews, it creates a huge impact on your readers. So, including clients' testimonials is a good method of optimizing your store as well. Let's move on to the next method, configuring your website settings. This may require a little bit of technical acumen, as you will need to ensure that the page loading speed is fast. The page loading speed of your website can have a tremendous effect on its ability to convert visitors. It has often been observed that visitors will actually exit the store if the site loads too slowly. Speed is everything these days. People expect things to be fast. Therefore, make sure to optimize the speed of your store as well. If you do not know how to do this, you could contact your web host, in this case Shopify, to solve the problem. And then, Make sure to link to the product page from your home page. This is a major problem for most people out there, especially those who are new to this business. They often forget to link the product page to the home page. This could cause a bad web experience for the visitors, which will lead to a bad impression and give you a bad reputation. Search engine optimization is something I've mentioned from the beginning. And I'll only touch on the basics of SEO here because this topic deserves a whole chapter to explain. As some of you may know, SEO is all about keywords. Therefore, look for different keywords to put on your store. Optimize the images of your store. Did you know that you can actually search the name of an image through the search engines? How you name the images on your store can actually help you increase your SEO as well. Last, optimize the anchor text on your store. You can easily enhance the visibility of your store by adding keywords to the internal links. Instead of simply writing, click here, choose something interesting and catchy. 
You can even include keyword rich links and link similar products together. It functions just like a hashtag. You can give out promotional codes to optimize your store as well. Simply drop an email or private message to your potential customers about this upcoming promotion. When you conduct an event on your store, you could actually optimize and run ad campaigns for the event. This can increase the visibility of your store as well. You can hold events on your store occasionally, such as a Christmas sale or a Valentine's sale. According to research, people are more likely to spend on special occasions than on normal days, so don't miss those chances to boost your traffic and sales by conducting your own promotional events. Hi, thank you for purchasing the course. You've made the right decision. I will teach you tips and tricks to generate more traffic to your store and boost the sales of your store with affiliate programs. In this video, you will learn the basics, the intricacies, and everything in between. I'm going to teach you how to generate massive traffic by conducting your own affiliate program to boost traffic to your site. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with a brief summary of what affiliate programs are all about. An affiliate program is a program where you, as the product vendor, pay a commission to your affiliate when they've made sales. If you're not a product vendor, you can join other people's affiliate programs to earn commission on sales of their product. To make a long story short, it's an online sales program. Product vendors want to sell their product, and affiliates promote the product to earn commission from the sales. In this case, to generate traffic to your store, you will conduct your own affiliate program to attract the affiliates to promote your store for you. An affiliate will send traffic to your store from their subscribers list. In return, they get paid a commission. This is a great way to generate traffic to your store because you only pay the affiliates whenever a purchase is made through them. When you conduct your own affiliate program, you can boost the traffic to your store. At the same time, you get to boost your sales. Both of these factors are closely related to each other. With Shopify, you can keep track of the traffic to your stores in the Shopify dashboard. As I've mentioned, if the traffic to your store increases, the higher your chances of increasing your sales. When you receive an affiliate request, I highly recommend that you filter the affiliates. Pick only those who are in the same niche as yours. Focus on quality instead of quantity. When you get quality traffic, sales could be boosted as well. Last but not least, when you conduct your own affiliate program, you only pay for results. When they make sales, you pay the commission. You don't need to pay them for the promotion because it's a commission-based program, meaning the cost to start your own affiliate program is zero. You only need to pay when their subscribers purchase your product. I will now show you step-by-step step how the whole affiliate process works. First things first, after the affiliates have their request approved by you, they will then mail out your offer to their subscribers. You can prepare swipe emails and other promotional tools for them to mail out. I will talk about the promotional tools later in this chapter. Next, the subscribers will then click on the link and be directed to your store. The first scenario is the subscriber does not make a purchase and leaves your store. In this case, you don't need to pay the affiliate. The second scenario is the subscriber makes a purchase. In this case, you will then pay a commission to the affiliate. Now that you know the whole process and concept of how an affiliate program runs, the next question that you may be asking is, how do I keep track of which affiliate makes the sale? How do I keep track of who gets the commission? Here's the solution. Use the Shopify affiliate program. Shopify provides an in-house affiliate program that links to Shopify. You can conduct your affiliate program with Shopify and get notified by Shopify whenever there's an affiliate request or sales. Instead of searching other platforms to conduct the affiliate program, start one with Shopify. As I've mentioned, you should provide promotional tools for the affiliates. This could be one of the factors that attracts the affiliate to join your program. The promotional tools are provided to make promotions easier for the affiliates. What you'll need to provide is swipe emails and banners, graphics, and videos if you have them. Swipe emails are promotional emails that your affiliate sends to their subscribers. 
It's best if you can write in a generic tone and voice, so then the affiliate can reword them to suit their subscribers. Banners, graphics, and videos are provided for them to put on the promotional page or review page that they lead their subscribers to. All these graphic elements directly represent your brand, which is why you would not want them to use their own graphics on the promotional page. Besides waiting for affiliates to join your program, there are other methods to recruit affiliates. Instead of being passive and waiting for them to come, you can join Facebook groups, both closed and open, to approach affiliates first. When you're on Facebook, search the keyword Affiliate or Shopify on Facebook and look for a group that suits you. It's a great way to network, too. You can participate in some forums as well. Search keyword Affiliate or Shopify to look for a community of affiliate vendors. After you've joined the groups, you must first demonstrate your dedication and credibility so the others will return the favor. For instance, help them with their promotions first. However, when you're looking for Facebook groups and forums to join, make sure that they're active. You don't want to join a group where no updates are being made. In addition, read the About section to know what the group is all about before you join them. Here are some tips for you to attract more affiliates to join you. First, emphasize the benefits of joining your affiliate program. When the affiliate goes to the affiliate page that you've prepared, the first thing they're looking for is what they can gain from your program. They ask, what's in it for me? This is exactly what you should focus on. It's the same technique used by marketers on their sales page. When selling, after telling the what, you have to answer the why. Why should they buy from you? The same thing applies here with the affiliates. There are hundreds of other affiliate programs they can take part in, so why should they choose yours? Second, a simple sign-up process is definitely a must. Collect only necessary information, such as name, an email address, an ID. It saves their time as well as yours. Third, filter and then talk to appropriate affiliates. Even though there are many affiliates, not all of them are suitable for your program. You should filter them according to niche and pick only those who are in the same niche as you. If you can, talk to them to get a better understanding of who they are. As entrepreneurs, we can often feel like the deck is stacked against us when it comes to the digital world. We don't have the same budget as our massive competitors, nor do we have the army of marketers that they can employ. So, how is a small or medium-sized business able to go against those overwhelming odds and carve out its piece of the market? In this video course, I'll teach you how to generate traffic to your Shopify store. Anyone who works for a major news website or publisher knows that social referrals, which means links that are shared on social networks, have become a crucial source of incoming traffic, and have been vying with search as a source of new readers for some time now. Now, Facebook is no longer just vying with Google, but has overtaken it by a significant amount, according to Parsley. This isn't the first time that Facebook has edged past Google in the traffic referral race. In January of last year, Facebook accounted for just 20% of all the traffic from documented sources to the company's network of media sites. This is now doubled. Although Google has a much broader range of sites which sends traffic via search, the larger news and media sites have become much more reliant on Facebook. In a nutshell, engaging posts come in three forms, which are text updates, photos, and third-party links. A study by Facebook Studio shows that posts with images drive more engagement. So whenever you can, share images along with links to your site to drive more engagement and get more people to click on the links. The nice thing about this is that the description travels with the photo when it's shared so you have a bit more control over the message. Besides this, you could also do what social media examiners do. They take a screenshot of their latest post and publish it along with a description and link to the post. This technique can drive a lot of engagement and can lead to more website traffic. The other nice thing about this is that photos can show up larger in the newsfeed. Another technique that has been popular in the past is to post your link in the status section and then X out the link data that is pulled in to change the post to text only, even though it already has a link in it. The benefit of this has been that text-only posts will get more reach. 
Besides your personal Facebook account, you can also create a fan page to drive traffic. An easy way to drive more Facebook traffic is by adding a link to your website in the About box. This is the one located right below the profile image on your page. In this way, people can easily visit your website with a click as soon as they read the description. If it's too long, people won't be able to see your link right away, so keep it short to make the link viewable. This will encourage more people to visit your site. Furthermore, don't leave the link by itself without any description. You may add a few words about your business to let readers know more about your page. It's important to post fresh content to your page, not only for social media marketing, but also for search engine optimization. Posting something new and helpful once a week or month can benefit your website traffic. You can post a weekly tip about niches. It doesn't have to be long. A paragraph or two with a nice photo will do just fine. Start with the frequently asked questions that come in from your customers. Other than that, posting a weekly news bite with a photo about the happenings in your business helps too. If you're able to update your page frequently, it definitely helps to drive more traffic to your site. Another great way to drive more traffic to your website from your Facebook page is by pinning the post to the top. You can pin new posts or your most important posts. This can be done by hovering over your post and clicking on the edit button, and then click on pin to the top. When the golden marker appears in the right corner of the post, it means that the post has been pinned to the top. Remember to regularly unpin old posts and pin the new ones. You could pin your latest blog post, important news, or images. To drive more traffic to your website, make sure you have links in other parts of your Facebook page that people might be visiting. You can make good use of your Facebook milestones. Milestones stay on your About page and can have links in them to drive traffic. Or else, you can also add links in your photo descriptions. When someone clicks on your photo, they'll see the photo description. Use this especially on your cover photo, which will be clicked on more often. In addition, do not neglect your own personal profile when considering how you can drive more traffic to your website. Make sure you share your blog posts to your personal profile and optimize your own About section with links. Be generous when you describe yourself and also your business. Write longer descriptions so that people who read the About page would understand you and your business right away. Advertising on Facebook can be a great option to get targeted traffic if you have a budget. With Facebook's recent announcements about decreased organic reach, advertising is going to be even more critical for marketers. To drive traffic to your website, you can either create an ad from scratch with a link to your website or boost content that you have already posted. When you boost content, remember to post something that doesn't have a photo and has more than 20% text in it or it won't get approved by Facebook. According to a study, very short posts receive more likes, while long posts receive more likes and shares. Therefore, it's better to write long posts compared to short ones, as it can be instrumental in driving more website traffic from your Facebook page. Writing quality posts is important, but posting at the right time will definitely boost your post visibility. According to another study, the best time to post on Facebook is at noon. You could also try and post at the best times in different time zones using a tool like Post Planner, or try posting at different times to see which one works for you. When you get more likes, more people will see your posts as it will appear on the news feed and on the tickers of the friends and followers of the users who liked it. If these are people who are interested in the post, they can check it out by clicking on the link. Popular posts are pushed higher up on the news feed, which will help them reach even more viewers. So make an effort to get more likes and drive more traffic to your page. Blogs are one of the best ways to drive traffic to a website, whether it's a corporate website, directory, or online shop. By adding great content to your blog regularly, you will provide useful resources to visitors and publish more pages for search engines to index. When you first blog about your online shop, generating traffic is the biggest challenge always. However, once you've overcome this hurdle, your blog gains exposure and attracts regular readers. High-quality articles generate more incoming links to your website, 
strengthening your brand, and increasing loyalty from readers, existing customers, or potential customers. High quality articles are more likely to be read and shared by others. Do not look at a blog simply as a way of increasing the number of indexable pages of your website. You need to focus on producing quality content. Steady traffic to your blog relies almost completely on the content you write. If you write a blog about your new product, for example, always write the most interesting, relevant content pertaining to that product. Give readers a reason to go to your website and purchase your product. If initial readers enjoyed the blog and the product, they may link to it or tell others to pay a visit. Remember, the more targeted your visitors are, the more likely they are to purchase your products and services. So focus on quality and forget about the cheap traffic that merely inflates traffic statistics. Blogging is not a one-way street. A blog gives you the opportunity to get to know your readers better and vice versa. One of the best places to connect with readers is through the comment area. After they've read your article, readers might have some questions that need to be answered. And that's the time where you come in to solve their problems. By answering questions and responding to readers' ideas, you can demonstrate your knowledge of a subject and build a relationship with potential customers. If you can help your visitors in some way, they'll be thankful and are more likely to subscribe to your blog, share your content, and become a loyal customer. The topics you cover on your blog will influence the kind of people who read your articles. If you publish many basic tutorials on the subject, you'll attract a lot of beginners. Likewise, if you publish advanced tutorials, you are more likely to attract people with more experience on the subject. Therefore, headlines are one of the most important parts of your content. Without a compelling headline, even the most comprehensive blog post will go unread. Master the art of headline writing. For example, the writers at BuzzFeed and Upworthy often concoct 20 different headlines before finally settling on the one that will drive the most traffic. Thus, think carefully about your headline before you hit publish. Next is to write consistently to keep your blog up to date. There are varying thoughts as to how frequently you should publish articles on a blog. Most high-traffic news blogs publish multiple times per day, as more news equates to more traffic. However, most businesses publish a few times per week or a few times per month. I would suggest that you aim for a minimum of once a week. Ideally, the more the better, but if you're running a business at the same time, it's difficult to publish more often without hiring writers. Search engines love frequently updated sites, but more importantly, users do as well. A site that's updated consistently tells users you are serious about providing good content, which makes it worthy for them to invest their time into reading it. In order to help you organize your blog better, it's worthwhile to schedule one or two weeks of articles in advance. Not preparing articles in advance will make your blog more susceptible to your blog publishing frequency being disrupted due to unforeseen circumstances. Almost no one will find your blog if you don't promote it. When you initially set up your blog, you probably won't be able to find it on most search engines even if you search for it by name. Promoting a blog effectively can be the difference between a dead blog and a successful blog. If you've got money to invest in your blog, you could develop your blog quicker by growing your social media presence and advertising on other websites. Guest blogging is a two-way street. In addition to posting content to other blogs, invite people in your niche to blog on your own site. They are likely to share and link to their guest article, which could bring new readers to your site. Just be sure that you only post high-quality, original content without spamming links. Competitions are also a great way of letting readers promote your blog for you. Competition services such as Rafflecopter allow people to enter a competition by sharing your article on Twitter or Facebook. Entries can also be made by commenting on your blog or signing up to your email newsletter. Another way to promote your blog is to leave a link to it whenever you post a comment to an article or on a forum. Visit and comment on other people's blogs that have a topic similar to yours. Commenting on popular blogs is a technique that many bloggers use to promote their new blog. While this can raise awareness of your blog, it's rarely that it's the most effective use of a blogger's time. Besides your own blog posts, you could make a good use of famous bloggers. 
This is only if you have a high budget to spend, as it won't be a small amount to ask for some famous blogger to blog about your product on their blogs. However, they would help you to gain a lot more traffic than posting on your own blog. Popular bloggers already have their own loyal readers. People would definitely find their blog posts more convincing and impactful. You can even try and ask them to promote your product on their own social media account, such as Instagram or Facebook, too. This is because people nowadays are more attracted to Instagram and Facebook because social media is easier to access and more popular among non-bloggers. Do you know that Reddit has generated 5 billion page views from nearly 86 million unique monthly visitors? It has targeted communities organized around every conceivable topic. It's also the largest, most influential, and most engaged community on the internet, as well as the self-proclaimed front page of the internet. You may think advertising on Reddit is an uphill battle, and it may not be worth it. But in fact, Reddit is a wide-open platform for advertisers who are willing to spend time doing Reddit advertising correctly. So, how do you advertise your store correctly and effectively on Reddit? We'll discuss that in this video. First, you need to understand both the opportunities and downsides of Reddit. Reddit is a site where people submit links to a specific subreddit that pertains to a certain topic, and users vote it up or down. Every Reddit user has a front page, which is the top post at any given moment from all their subscribed subreddits. Your opportunity to advertise on Reddit is to pay to have the top post. But an even bigger opportunity on Reddit is that there are subreddits organized around every conceivable topic and interest. However, there are potential issues that can be a major downside or opportunity depending on your outlook. Redditors have a well-known and active disdain for marketers and advertising people. They are particularly aware and have a high consciousness around products and companies. If your product is awful, then Reddit is not going to be a good fit for you. But it's not just about knowing the right opportunity when you see it. Knowing the right time to post on Reddit makes a difference too. Just like social media outlets like Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, Reddit does have a best time to post. There are many different times of days and weeks when posts have done well on Reddit. As long as you do not try to post a piece of content from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., any time is a good opportunity to generate more traffic to your store. In order to understand if Reddit is going to make sense as a marketing channel for your store, we first need to understand the demographics of the people that make up the community. According to statistics, Reddit is largely comprised of users between the ages of 18 and 34, which is a good sign because this demographic does a lot of online shopping. But here is one thing, the website is made up largely of male users. However, the percentage of males may not be quite as high as people might assume. There is a sizable population of female Redditors that should not be overlooked by marketers who are trying to get female-friendly content discovered, even though they make up only 35% of total users. For marketers and business owners alike, the most interesting data about Reddit is the breakdown of income levels. About 75% of Redditors make between zero and 50,000 a year which means businesses selling expensive luxury products are unlikely to find much success. For small businesses selling affordable products, these statistics should make it even clearer to you and your business that advertising on Reddit is a viable option. As I said earlier, you do have to pay for a top post. It's the top post on particular subreddits that you're looking to advertise on. This also dovetails into what you are really buying, which is a Reddit post that will instantly be at the top. Reddit has a full list of frequently asked questions, but the basic rule is to be cool. My advice is not to put any misleading headlines and weird redirects if you want an approval for your ad. All Reddit ads are 75 cents CPM, which means you get 1,000 views for 75 cents. As a comparison, the Google Display Network usually runs around $2 CPM, and Facebook CPM hovers around $1.25. Unlike Facebook, where you advertise to people who might like your topic but might not be interested at the moment, 
Advertising on a subreddit allows you to get in front of people who are actively thinking about the topic when they see your ad. Subreddits can be created by anyone about anything. They have no naming conventions and create a huge universe of communities. It can be daunting to browse and sort. Reddit has all the not-so-cool stuff existing on the internet in general, which automated processes have a hard time sifting through. If you try to automate the process, you'll probably end up somewhere you don't want to be. This is the reason why I recommend that you do general Reddit research as a starting point, and then follow the links. Nearly all subreddits link to other subreddits and recommend other communities. If you are willing to do research, you will quickly find the big ones and will be able to click and dig up a few communities that look interesting. Thank you for investing your time in this course. My hope is that you'll use it to help you succeed in marketing. Here, you will find innovative ways to generate massive traffic to your websites, increasing your conversion and purchase rate. You can do all of this by implementing video marketing. Video marketing is one of the most effective techniques used to bring a large amount of traffic to your store. In this video, I'm going to lead you through the basics of video marketing techniques. So without further ado, let's begin. I believe that most of you have had the experience of watching a sales video on a sales page, and you know how powerful it is to watch a video on a product you're interested in. People nowadays can get access to content on the internet fast, so it's natural that they want information fast. This is why video marketing works so well. Visuals always work better than text. You can present a long message within just a couple of minutes with video. To further increase the exposure of your services or products, video marketing is a time-tested technique. Internet users watch 4 billion videos per day on YouTube, and that's just one outlet where people are seeing sales videos. People are naturally more inclined to watch videos than to read content. So, why tell them about your product when you can show them? Showing a short video creates a greater impact with your customers than presenting long text because people can get a clearer idea of what your service or products will be like through visual demonstration. Because it's more engaging and user-friendly, watching videos is an easier and more enjoyable way to digest information. Before you start your production, the first thing that you should do is decide on the type of video you want to create. There are several types of videos for you to consider. First, you can create a screencast or video screen capture. This can be used to demonstrate a product. And you can do this by recording your computer screen showing the product. And at the same time, screen capture software can record you verbally discussing the product. Or you can make it an on-screen tutorial to walk your audience through how to use a particular product. This type of video is very effective for demonstration purposes because users get to watch how something works step-by-step -step on screen. If your product is something that requires a showcase, Screencast is what you'll need. The recommended software to use for video screen capture is Camtasia. The second type is PowerPoint or Keynote Slides. This is where you deliver your message to your viewers through PowerPoint or Keynote presentation slides as you narrate. This type of video is extremely effective if you have a really long topic to share. You can even make it a series of videos to share with them every week or month. Next is a talking head video. This type of video is very good for personal branding because the audience will see what you look like and how you interact with them. Instead of putting yourself in the video, you can interview someone to endorse your services or upcoming product launch. Apart from this, you can interview customers to get their testimonials. It's much more effective than talking about how good your product is all by yourself. Next, you can choose to put the video live on the internet, which is called live stream or webcasting. Go to livestream.com or ustream.tv and you can record live video of yourself or an interview with experts online. If you're not too excited about appearing in person, you can use animation as a substitution. There's plenty of software available online that could make your work easier, such as Video Maker FX. It's a great way to easily create an animated video. You don't need extensive knowledge in animation to create one with the software. After you've created your videos, you need to put them where they can do the most good for your marketing. 
I suggest uploading your videos to YouTube or Facebook. YouTube and Facebook are the most prominent social media platforms on the internet for watching videos. If you've decided to implement video marketing, YouTube and Facebook are the two platforms that you should definitely use. Also, you want to make sure to always link your videos to your online store. Video marketing is becoming increasingly popular, which is why you should use it. However, we must think ahead to the worst case scenario that could happen if the video does not drive traffic to your site. This can happen if your video does not have a high viewership rate, but this can be solved by using Google AdWords. Google AdWords is a popular and effective paid advertising platform. With a huge number of users, Google is indeed the most recognized ad platform in the world. More than half of the world's population uses Google search engine daily, so using AdWords can double or even triple the traffic to your site. One feature of using Google AdWords is that it strengthens your SEO, which is search engine optimization. You will need to learn about the most searched keywords in your niches in order to get a good search result. With Google AdWords, your budget is fully under your control. You get to set your own daily budget for your advertising campaign. To start an advertising campaign with Google AdWords, you just need to follow five simple steps. First, you need to create your own AdWords account. Don't worry, it's free of charge. In addition, the sign-up process is very simple. You only need to enter in your email address and password, and Google will automatically fill in the other fields for you if you are already a Google user. In just a few minutes, you can be up and running. The next step, you'll choose Video Campaign. Google AdWords is not only for video marketing. If you have your own website and you want it to be at the top of Google search engine results, you can place ad bids here for that as well. I'm not going to go further into depth on this because it's a topic for another video. After you've picked video campaign, you'll be directed to another page where you can select your budget. You can set your daily budget or campaign budget based on your financial plan. Let's say the cost per view is 10 cents on average for your video and you'd like to bid for 100 views per day. Your daily budget will be 10 cents times 100, so in total, $10 per day. Of course, after some time of testing the traffic, you can change your daily budget if you think increasing or decreasing it will help you sell your product. Next, you get to choose the delivery method. You'll need to choose the network, YouTube search page, YouTube videos advertisement, or video on Google partner sites, apps, and display network. You can click every box there if you wish. And then, choose the locations you want your video ad to be shown and the languages your target audience speaks. Under the advanced settings, you can schedule your start date, end date, and add scheduling. It is better to have an end date just in case you forget to end the campaign. You don't want to keep getting charged for no reason. The next step is to choose the type of advertisement you want for your video. There are two types of video ads, the in-stream and in-display video. The in-stream video ad plays before another video on YouTube. Viewers can choose to skip your ad after a few seconds, and you only pay if a viewer watches for 30 seconds or to the end of the ad, whichever comes first. On the other hand, if you choose the in-display video ad, it requires you to upload an image and add some text. This ad will show differently, depending on where on YouTube it appears. It will either show up in the search results page, YouTube-related videos as a YouTube overlay, or on partner websites. You pay only when someone clicks your ad to view your video. The ultimate goal of bidding on keywords is to move your video to the top of the ad rank. This is how competition works in AdWords. The higher your rank is, the better exposure your site gets. Ad rank is decided by Google, and determines the placement of your ads. You might be wondering how this thing actually works. Well, I'll talk about that now. One of the factors that affects your ad rank is the amount of your bid. Every user gets to choose how much they want to bid. However, it's not only based on how much you bid. If you think that the higher bidder always gets a higher rank, then you're wrong. Besides looking at the daily budget you've set for the video, Google also looks at the quality of your video. Now, you may be wondering how to get a higher rank. Google wants to show only relevant videos to their users and avoid advertisers that simply buy the ad space but only provide irrelevant ads. So here's how you can move your video up to the top in ad rank. Follow this ad rank formula, 
which consists of three elements. If you can do these things, you're going to get yourself to the top. The first element is your bid. In this bidding competition, you are competing with millions of advertisers all around the world. This is not a small number, so make sure you calculate your own financial budget before you put in your bid amount and get a feel for what other people are bidding. Your bid needs to be competitive with theirs. The second element is the relevancy of your video. Google will analyze the relevancy by comparing it to the language on your site. The language on your site has to be closely related to the headline and text from your video. This once again proves how important it is to choose your keywords wisely. They need to be relevant to your niche. Google will then determine how well your video ranks. The final element for ad rank is performance factors, such as view rates. Google will evaluate your videos with the keywords you've set and calculate the expected view rates of your video. This is not something we can predict because it's determined by Google's algorithms. Hi and welcome. In this video, I will reveal to you all the secrets of using search engine optimization to generate a massive amount of traffic to your site. If you are able to master this skill to make your store more SEO friendly, you won't need any other technique to generate traffic. As you already know, SEO is the most powerful technique internet marketers are using to boost website visibility. You may already know how powerful it is, but you might be wondering how to do it. So without further ado, I'm going to tell you the secrets of optimizing the SEO of your store. Before we get in any further in depth, we must first understand the basics of SEO. For everyone's benefit, let's refresh our minds on the concept of SEO. SEO is the process of affecting the visibility of a website in search engines. The better you optimize your store with SEO, the higher the visibility of your store on search results pages. This may sound difficult for some of you because you are competing with an enormous number of internet users around the world. However, if you play the right card at the right time, succeeding with SEO is not as hard as you might imagine. SEO links all the sites with similar keywords together to make them searchable online. When someone searches the term piano, everything related to piano will show up on the results page. When your store is SEO friendly, you can increase the exposure of your store on search results. You will buy a domain name with the keywords you want in it, and then when someone looks for that certain keyword, your site will pop up in the search results. This is how SEO works. It is all about keywords. You're going to play with keywords to increase your site's exposure. What's next after increasing exposure? The traffic to your site will increase as well, provided you have a really good keyword. When you have a really competent keyword in your niche, the rate of your site showing in the search results page is higher. Thus, you are going to see traffic increase over the long run. You have to be patient with SEO. It's a long-term investment. It might not show you instant results, but in the long run, SEO is definitely the best thing for providing your business exposure. When you have increased traffic to your site, you will certainly increase your mailing list. A mailing list is one of the most valuable assets for a marketer because the bigger the mailing list, the higher chance you'll get more sales from a product launch. The same thing applies if you have a lot of subscribers to your newsletter. It gives you the opportunity to get more sales from a product launch. Here's a tip for you. When the traffic to your site increases with a good SEO plan, direct them to a squeeze page to collect their email address and name to grow your mailing list first. Most store owners do not know how much money they have left behind by not collecting email addresses first. Let's talk about criteria for a keyword search. In order to get a good result in SEO, keywords play a vital role. You need to use the right keyword for the search engine to drive users to your site. There is no right or wrong answer for this part. It all depends on your niche. First, of course, the keyword has to be relevant to your content. You don't want to use a keyword that is not related to your site because you don't want to be looked at as a spammer. This is the most essential factor that search engines take into account when they evaluate sites. The worst case of using a wrong keyword is you could be penalized by the search engine and forced to take down your site. Next is to determine the terms or phrases searched in major engines. 
Most of these keywords are highly competitive, as many of the other companies all want to claim ownership over major keywords. This kind of keyword will usually require a higher price to start with. You might want to avoid these, especially when you first begin. Google provides a service named Keyword Traffic Estimator. It's a tool that tells you how many times a certain keyword is searched online. If you have a large enough budget, go for it. If you do not wish to wait a long time, as I said, SEO can be a time-consuming process, you can buy a sample campaign from Google AdWords. Look within your niche, list out all the potential keywords, and then you can delete the ones that don't fit that criteria. Once you've decided on the keyword, buy the domain name and the keyword from any search engine. You'll see traffic will start coming into your site pretty soon. Now, let's discuss Google AdWords. Google is the most recognized paid advertising platform in the world, with a huge number of users. In fact, Google has 86% of the search engine market. More than half of the world's population goes to Google's search engine first before anything else. As mentioned, Google AdWords advertises with SEO. And now you know how to research keywords. Optimize your store and buy the advertising campaign with Google AdWords to boost your ad rank on the search engine. Last but not least, the budget you are going to spend for Google AdWords is fully under your control. You may have thought that advertising with Google is a huge expense for you, but it's not. You get to set your own daily budget for the advertising campaign. To give you a clearer picture on how exactly Google AdWords works, I'll walk you through what Google AdWords can do for you now. First, it makes your page stand out in search results. Now you know how Google AdWords functions and how efficient it is to bring massive traffic to your site. Of course, you know that good things never come for free. You will pay Google a fee based on your bid amount every time someone clicks on your ad. You need not worry that Google will simply charge you for occupying their ad space. You will only pay when someone clicks on the link to your store. Other than appearing on the top or side of the first search result page, Google does advertise on other people's websites as well. You can buy banner advertising on popular pages from Google, and you don't need to worry about getting permission from the site owner. Google already did that for you. To start the advertising campaign with Google AdWords, you just need to follow three simple steps. First, create your own AdWords account. And don't worry, this is free of charge, and the process is quite simple. You only need to put in your email address and your password. Google will automatically fill in the other fields if you are already a Google user. In just a few minutes, you'll be up and running. Next step, you will choose the keywords for your site. Make sure the keywords are appropriate for your site. The final step is to set your daily budget based on your financial plan. Let's say the pay-per-click is $0.10 cents on average for a particular keyword, and you would like to bid for 100 clicks per day. Your daily budget will be $0.10 cents times 100, so in total, $10 a day. Different keywords may have different starting bids. Of course, after testing the traffic your keyword generates over a few weeks or months, you can increase the bid if you think it will give you more traffic. The ultimate goal of doing all this bidding is to move your site to the top of the ad rank. This is what competition is in AdWords. The higher your ad rank is, the better exposure your site will get. Ad rank is used by Google to determine the placement of your ads. You might be wondering how this actually works. Well, I'll reveal that to you now. One of the factors that affects your ad rank is the auction for clicks, which is how much you bid on the keyword. Every user gets to choose how much to bid on the same keyword. However, your ad rank is not only based on how much you've bid. If you think that the higher bidder gets a higher rank, you're wrong. Besides looking at the daily budget you've set, Google also looks at the quality of the sites as well to make ad rank decisions. Now, you may be wondering how you might get a higher rank. First, you must understand how Google sets standards for every site. Google only wants to show relevant sites in their search engine and avoid advertisers with money to simply purchase ads if their ads are irrelevant. You can move your site up to the top in ad rank if you follow this ad rank formula, which consists of five elements. If you manage to master the skills to maximize these five elements, you're going to get yourself up to the top of the ad rank. The first element is the bid for the keyword. 
You're competing with millions of advertisers all around the world, so make sure you do keyword research beforehand. You wouldn't want to bid on an irrelevant keyword for nothing. The second element is the expected click-through rate. And this is not something that we could predict because it's fully determined by Google based on their own prediction of how many people will click on your ad. For your information, Google actually asks feedback from their users from time to time by allowing them to vote for their clicks. Based on this result, Google will then evaluate the traffic they think will get sent to your site. This is not under your control. However, you can increase your click-through rate by choosing the right keywords. The next element is landing page experience. Google emphasizes this because your landing page determines if your site matches the keywords you choose. If your landing page contains relevant and original content, is easy to navigate, and the transparency of your business is high, Google is more likely to rate your store high. Other than this, Google analyzes the relevancy of a site by reading the site content. And once again, this proves to us how important it is to pick the right keyword according to your niche. It will determine how well your site will be ranked. The final element for ad rank is the ad format. Ad format is the way you present your site in the search engine, such as the side links, websites domain, meta descriptions, and the other headlines. Google will look into all these elements under the ad format category. There are two main problems faced by people when establishing an online shopping store. Problem number one, they don't possess the technical skills to build an online store. But this problem can be covered easily by most of the instant e-commerce software available. So it's just a matter of who you pay for the service. On the other hand, there is a group of people who pass through the first problem, but they stumbled upon another, bigger problem, which is traffic. That is problem number two. Building an online store is not a big problem if you've chosen the right platform to start with. However, traffic isn't a problem that can be solved easily with money. Without traffic, it'll be hard for you to see your first sale coming in. Moreover, there are millions of active merchants selling on the internet every day. It will be difficult for you to get noticed by your prospects without a proper approach. If traffic is a struggle for you, you can sit back and relax now because I've come out with an instant solution called Shopify Traffic. This is a full-fledged training course that teaches you how to utilize social media, such as Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram to grow organic traffic. Also, I'll walk you through lessons on recruiting affiliates to promote for you, using Shopify apps to generate mobile traffic, optimizing your Shopify store for more sales, and so much more waiting for you inside. Instead of figuring it out on your own, you have an instant solution right in front of you. All you need to do is download my blueprint and apply it to your business. These are proven and effective methods. You should be able to see results in a very short time. Click on the button below to secure your instant access. Pinterest, unlike some of the other emerging social networks, is something marketers need to take more seriously. Did you know that Pinterest drives more traffic to individual blogs and websites than YouTube, Google+, and LinkedIn combined? People are naturally drawn to attractive, magazine-quality images. Information can be processed very quickly when it's seen as an image or picture, and Pinterest makes it possible to leverage beautiful, shareable images to drive more traffic to your site. It's also a powerful way for users to discover things which they might not expect to find. It's become a visual search engine for products and can link items together based on how they've been previously pinned or searched. Optimizing your pinned descriptions can have a dramatic effect on Pinterest search impressions. Try to anticipate what pinners might be looking for and include these terms in your pinned descriptions. Make sure the description also includes any other important details about the pin. Your description has to encourage pinners to engage with your pin and eventually visit your site. Keep in mind that pins with generic keyword stuff descriptions are put-offs and may be demoted in search. You need to be careful on tagging issues. There is really no reason to tag all your friends every time you post a pin. It would be pretty annoying if you do so and might cause some traffic loss. However, if a pin reminds you of someone or if you want to give credit to a particular pinner, do tag them. The person being tagged will more likely share your pin, which helps to get your brand on other people's radars. 
In order to have your boards surface on Pinterest's board search, use meaningful names that pinners are likely to search for. You can have a mix of boards with specific names, but don't forget to write compelling and targeted descriptions of your boards, too. Also, remember to add to them frequently to keep your followers engaged and to make your boards easier to discover. Next, one of the first things that every business should do once they start their Pinterest account is to add their website to their profile. To add your website, all you need to do is go to Settings and click on Edit Profile. At the bottom, you'll be able to add any website you want. However, I would strongly suggest that you validate your Pinterest account as a business account since you're doing it for your online store. When you validate your business account, your website will receive a check mark next to it to indicate that the website does belong to you. This is really great for brand protection. If you've created a pin and you want to drive traffic back to your site, you can put your website URL in your pin's description. It helps to drive more traffic to your site when people read the description and are able to click on it. However, the website is only clickable on the desktop version of Pinterest and the URL gets cut short, but it will be in bold when shown on the newsfeed. This can be extremely helpful in attracting more web traffic from people who are using Pinterest for the first time. Other than that, Putting your website address inside your pins is a great idea because the more people see your website from your pins, the more they are going to be curious to visit it, which promotes your brand more effectively. Another reason to put your website on your own pins is to protect your brand and visuals. There are people who hijack others' pins and have them redirected to a different site. The only way that Pinterest can know where to find the pin's content is through the website. You can generate traffic for your site by adding a call to action, such as a check out this page now in your pin description. With a great and attractive offer, online users will be compelled to click on the link. Pinterest is no doubt a perfect online marketing platform for online businesses. The more followers you have on Pinterest, the greater the reach and effectiveness of your online posts. Thus, you will need to know some tools to get more followers so you can capitalize the most from the social media channel. ViralWoot is a great online resource that you can use to increase Pinterest followers. This online tool allows you to gain tens of thousands of followers with just a matter of minutes. Apart from increasing followers, you can also use the tool to promote Pinterest pins, schedule the pins, create pin alerts, manage and grow multiple accounts, etc. A free trial is available for people to find out how this tool can help to create a strong presence on Pinterest and gain maximum traffic. It only takes one pin to go viral and drive a lot of traffic to your site, so it is important for you to know how to pin it right. First, create beautiful vertical images for both mobile devices and desktops. If you don't optimize your pins for both mobile and desktops, you will lose some great opportunities to gain visibility for your pins. As we all know, mobile usage is very high these days. Your images must also stand out because they are competing with hundreds of other pins every single moment. Every social media platform you use needs to be constantly updated so that people will notice your activeness. Pin consistently as users who regularly engage with Pinterest and consistently share great images are rewarded with preferential treatment on the feed. Last, as a publisher, you can encourage more pins from your site if you improve social sharing on your own business website. This is especially critical for the mobile version of your site because you cannot hover over an image to pin it to your account on your smartphone like you can do on your desktop. Thus, if adding a pin it to your site can make such a difference, why not do so? Instagram is one of the hottest visual social media platforms which can bring a human and approachable aspect to your brand. If you have a brand account on Instagram, your main attention is to grab more followers every day. Photos or images can make social media go crazy. The usage of Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest has also proven that photos can drive more traffic to your websites. After Facebook bought Instagram for $1 billion back in 2012, it increased in popularity and brought real value to the company. Now, 41 million photos are shared daily, 
and can gather 8,000 likes and 1,100 comments per second. If you count on Instagram to drive traffic, you will need to make sure that your website is mobile friendly, as most people check websites through their smartphones or tablets. So it is important to offer them the best experience possible. First of all, you should always link back to your website. How are you going to do this? You can post photos of your products and make sure you attach a great picture to grab attention. You can share the latest images that you used in your website with a relevant link. Write an attractive description and provide a call to action button to convince people to pay a visit to your website. Having your own link and banner helps too. Brands have been featuring big banners linking back to their social media accounts or campaigns and it has shown positive results to drive good amount of traffic back to their websites. Besides, you could also use Instagram badges. This is because Instagram made icons are the easiest tool to link back to your account and drive the traffic back to your online profile. Next, make sure you are being very clear in your call to action on Instagram that you want people to click on the link in the bio. Design Instagram photos that convert. You can layer a call to action and your website URL directly onto an aesthetically pleasing photo. If you really want to grow an audience and create brand advocates, Instagram is the place to do that. But you have to be equally open, engaging, and active with your audience. When people respond to or comment on your post, make sure you're engaging with and responding to them. Furthermore, the most common way to lead Instagram followers to your website is to use the link in the bio tactic. Instagram lets you include one clickable link in your bio, so make sure you use it effectively. To add a link, simply go to Edit Profile and type the link in the website text box. With the tool Have to Have It, you can use your bio link to direct followers to a page with the same look as your Instagram feed, where they can click images to purchase your product or read your content. You will also need to know how to make good use of hashtags on Instagram. Just like Twitter, Instagram uses hashtags to organize photos. If you are a current Instagram user, you might have noticed that the picture description has many hashtags, which makes the picture more searchable. The best way to generate exposure and get more engagement is to use hashtags on Instagram. Some hashtags are more popular than others, but it's advisable to use the most relevant hashtags that fit your brand image. The Instagram search engine is more powerful than Twitter. Therefore, if you start adding more hashtags, the higher the chances are that you'll be getting your image discovered by more people. However, do not over-hashtag each post. Yes, hashtags are a great way for your brand to be discovered, but only when used wisely. A caption should not stretch two images in height when scrolling, just because it's full of hashtags. Sometimes, too many hashtags in one picture can be annoying and people won't read them one by one. Use around five to seven hashtags. That's acceptable per post. Of course, you need to be constantly checking on the popularity or trending hashtags on Instagram to stay on track. Follow along and see if you have a photo that relates to one of the trending tags so that you can join in on the feed. This is another great way to keep track of the daily holidays. For example, hashtag International Chocolate Day while incorporating your brand. Research a little bit to see which hashtags are popular on Instagram. Include them in your picture to reach out to that refined target. Here are some examples of hashtags that gain a large number of followers. Hashtag follow. Hashtag love. Hashtag POTD. Hashtag OOTD. Hashtag IGERS. Hashtag InstaDaily. And hashtag tap me. Besides popular hashtags, you can actually be creative and create your very own hashtags for your brand. Zone in on one area of your photo and emphasize hashtags that fit that specific topic to avoid using the same hashtags over and over again. It will be easier for people to reach you when they know your personal hashtags. Candid shots are great and engaging, but pixelated images are unattractive and make a brand look bad. Impressive photos with captivating calls to action are what make Instagram users follow new people and leave Instagram to visit a website. Display your best products, make a brand personal, and add contrast to make a photo stand out on Instagram. 
The background of an image is an important factor for posting quality Instagram images. Some of the best Instagram users have carefully crafted a background for their photos. Whether they're displaying a perfect homemade candy bar for Halloween or a high fashion purse, photographers and designers are making backgrounds a priority and using them as a tool to highlight a product. Engagement increases sharply, as does traffic from Instagram, when multiple products are featured in front of well-thought-out backgrounds. Putting the background aside, your image should be appealing enough to catch people's attention. You want to connect with Instagram users, so make sure your images are high quality. They should show your product in an atmosphere and not just a standalone item. You can use a variety of filters and tools to enhance images to blend in well with Instagram. Use a variety of images to showcase your business. For example, behind the scenes, tips and advice, promotions and discount and celebration. Having contests and giving out attractive prizes on Instagram drives a lot more traffic than you might think. Here's a scenario. You've just launched your online store's Instagram account, and you might have a launching giveaway on Instagram. Before you hold the contest or giveaway event, you might want to stimulate audience curiosity. Post a picture or smoke signal for people to have a sneak peek and preview, thus attracting people to your website. You can take pictures of your new development or latest product and direct people to your website for more details, along with the giveaway date. You are free to strategize the Instagram photo contests, but there are ways to maximize the impact of your brand followers. So what can you do to strategize your contest in an effective way? First, you can set the condition that in order to enter the contest, the individual has to follow your brand's official account. Next, ask them to create or repost photos that promote your brand. It is even better if you put in your own brand's hashtags for them. As questions about the event or sale begin to multiply on a post, stay engaged and respond to each comment. This is a great time to answer followers' questions. Or you can also choose to post answers on the URL in the bio section.